Hi everybody, how are you? Uh, I don't know if you remember the video I did on my original Gretsch, my G6120. Towards the end of that video, I mentioned another model by Gretsch uh, that I suggest checking out. Not that I tried it at the time, but it looked like the closest alternative to it. It was called the G5420, which is the very guitar we are looking at this week. Okay, as mentioned, this is the Gretsch 5420, um, which is a very nice guitar. I just want to point out at this point that the guys at Fender in the UK have let me borrow this for this video, and I'm very appreciative, and I just want to say a big thanks to them. Off the back of when I did my the video with my other Gretsch, I was really intrigued to see what this guitar would be like, and I'm very impressed. We'll get into more details in a bit. First things first, though, you just got to talk about a few things with this. Price on this is nine, full retail is about 900 pounds compared to the 6120, which is about two and a half thousand. There's a lot of other differences as well, but it feels very familiar. Sitting playing this today, recording all the tracks with it, it feels a lot like my one, it really does. Um, but obviously a fraction of the cost. One thing that's worth mentioning is the color on this model is black, but you can actually get this in the same orange stain as the 6120. So if, like I said at the end of that other video, if you're looking for a similar guitar but don't want to spend the money, perhaps this is one to go with. And layout wise, it feels very familiar as well. You've got the scratch plate, you've got the master volume just here, independent volumes for each pickup, and a tone pot. Although that's not a bypass tone pot, it's just a standard tone pot in this. In terms of other specs, it's got a maple body, a maple neck, a rosewood fingerboard. You don't have the locking tuners on the top, they're just standard tuners. And also you get uh, black top Filtertron pickups in this. The master volume is actually still a treble bleed master volume. You still got the F holes, you still got that sort of late 50s headstock, Graph Tech Nubo nut, and you've got those uh, thumbnail inlays as well. So it does feel very much like um, my other one. A few differences as well, like the strap buttons on this I really like, and the binding around the edges is really nice too. Um, it came set up, uh, it came out, you know, out the box the way it was set up, really nice. I just lowered the, um, lowered the, the, the bridge down here on the, uh, Adjustomatic bridge, as you can see, I've left the um, left the little sticker on there. But the one thing I think it's worth pointing out so far, from what I've found, it, th this guitar is equally as versatile as my other one. couple of other things that are worth mentioning um, in comparison to the 6120. Uh, there's a few things, and I'll mention them, but it, you know, it kind of feels a little bit unfair because this guitar is essentially a third of the cost of that. And it's its own guitar. You know, these Electromatics are their own um, range and at their own price point in their own right. They're obviously made in Korea. Uh, you don't get a case with them. You There's an optional gig bag 
as well. And obviously you don't get the Bigsby. Although I, when I had a look, I'm sure you can get a, a right-handed version of this with a Bigsby. So if they did a lefty with a Bigsby, they would absolutely be laughing. Um, I'm not going to lie, because I'm so used to playing my one, I've really missed having the Bigsby there. But some people won't be fussed about it if they don't want it. You know, you, you're not losing out kind of thing. And I was really dubious, if I'm honest, when I, when I saw the price of it actually knowing my guitar so well how much I'd actually like it. And I really like it. <laughs> like genuinely really like it. I think if you're in the market and you don't own one, like I said in my first video, if you're in the market for something but don't want to pay all that money for, for one of the higher end Gretches, this really is a good guitar for not a lot of money. And it's a lot of guitar as well. It's a big old guitar. You know, it's, it's uh, I'm good. Look, I'll nitpick at a couple of things I don't like, but they're really, really minimal. Like I said, there was no problem with the way it came and it plays and it's set up and it sounds great. Um, I'm not crazy about the tuners. I think they look for such a big old headstock up there. I think they're a little bit small, particularly on the back. I think they look a little bit cheap. That's just my personal opinion. Like I say, I miss the Bigsby. The pickups are great. These black top filtertrons, they're not as good as the, the other filtertrons that you get in the, the higher end Gretches. They still sound very much like a Gretsch should do. They just, I think they're just a little bit more um, raspy and not as tight as some of the other filtertrons. But again, this is all being done to a price. So, and I'm really not knocking these pickups because they're really, really good. So I'm really surprised um, uh, at how good this guitar is. And genuinely now I've tried it and I'm trying to not be biased here, but I would strongly suggest uh, checking one of these out. <laughs> Okay, that's nearly it. Couple of things. Um, firstly, I thought it might be good to start mentioning some other left-handed guitar um, places, websites, that sort of thing. And um, since I've been on uh, Instagram with the this whole thing, uh, I've found loads. Uh, there's a amazing shop in um, Texas, I'm going to say, called South Poor Guitars. My God, it looks unbelievable. The sheer amount of lefties that they have in there. Um, I'll throw a link up to that. And also another website in general, good resource place that I've actually personally looked at for years and years every now and then. It's called leftyfrets.com. I'll also put a link to that too. Um, and this week's recommended listening is an album by the Black Crows from 1994. It's called Amorica. And I know a lot of people like Shake Your Money Maker and some of the other Black Crows albums, but this is my favorite Black Crows album it's full of brilliant songs, a nice vibe, um, obviously some great playing, some great tone in there, and all round a brilliant album. I strongly suggest checking it out. Uh, that is it for this week. Once again, thanks to the guys at Fender uh, UK for letting me borrow this. I will um, sadly have to now put it back in its box and send it back, but um, I, I do honestly check check these out if you get a chance because they're brilliant guitars and i will see you on the next one <laughs>